Well, cast your mind back to February last year, and you may remember the excitement when NASA successfully... On the 5th of May, 2018, NASA conducted a new research exploration on Mars through a spacecraft named the InSight Lander. As the InSight Lander roamed the dust-filled area of a certain place, it detected something very strange on the surface of the Red Planet, a trace of evidence that would mark a history in the discoveries involving Mars, an implication of life. For years, we were taught to believe that the only living planet in our solar system is the Earth. While that actually is not wrong in terms of habitability, if we talk about the geological state of the planets, then that's where things change. The only terrestrial giants that were officially announced as inactive are the Moon and Mercury, all because of their relatively small size. However, one planet took the spotlight of curiosity in the face of discovery, and that's the planet Mars. Scientists have sent Mars missions many times to explore the planet a little more. In fact, Mars has been the destination of the highest number of successful spacecraft missions, 22 spacecraft in all. Eight rovers and landers have successfully landed on Mars out of 12 attempts in order to study the state of this red ball of mystery in space. But why are space agencies spending so much effort on Mars? What makes Mars so special among the planets in our solar system? Because of its current state, Mars had oftentimes been misconceived of as a dead planet. Even so, science has proved that it is the only planet in our solar system that has a closer possibility of sustaining human needs. But why was it considered or perhaps misjudged as a dead planet? Planets are structured similarly to the design of a human body. In order for a human to be considered alive, it has to have a beating heart, and in order for the planet to be considered alive, it also has to have geological activity in its core. With the heart dead, human skin shrinks and discolors, losing the ability to produce warmth and protection. The same thing happens to a planet if it loses its internal activity. Recently, scientists believed that Mars's core had been deteriorating to oblivion, considering that no trace of a magnetic field had ever been recorded. But the existence of Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system, is a piece of cogent evidence that the red planet was once a boiling plot for geological activities. However, scientists estimated that the recent volcanic eruption at Olympus Mons occurred 25 million years ago, and none had been ever recorded in the present day. So, does that mean Mars had been geologically inactive or even dead since then? Mars lost its magnetic field billions of years ago, which resulted in the planet being stripped out from its own atmosphere leaving the surface completely dried out and completely lacking water. The loss of Mars's magnetic field resulted in many catastrophic histories that made Mars what people think of it today, the red and dead planet. The loss of its magnetic field also exposed Mars's iron-rich rocks to the open heat which encouraged the process of oxidation, turning the rocks into a reddish and rusty-like color. Researchers pointed out that when Mars was young, it once had a global magnetic field. Unfortunately, the iron core dynamo that generated this magnetism lost its function billions of years ago, leaving only patches of it due to the magnetized minerals in the Martian crust. The reason behind the rapid cooling of Mars's stomach is still being studied. Countless theories have emerged and experiments were done to explain and give the curious audience a glimpse of this unlikely event. When Mars lost its magnetic field, it was believed to be dead. This is because a planet's magnetic field is a product of internal movement. 
People thought that its geological lungs had finally collapsed into eternity, just like what Mercury had become, and that Mars had finally stopped its geological activity. But this persisting theory about the Red Planet was finally put into question when yet another Mars mission was sent four years ago. On the 5th of May, 2018, NASA launched yet another crucial mission to explore the Red Planet. The InSight lander was sent to Mars to survey the surface and give it its first thorough checkup since the last time its lungs heaved. InSight stands for Interior Exploration Using Seismic Investigations, Geodesy, and Heat Transport. Its aim is to collect significant data on geological life on the Red Planet. While the InSight lander can work as a lens to acquire images of Mars's surface for analysis, its main purpose was to investigate the mystery beneath the surface of the Red Planet. The InSight lander's discoveries have settled the confusion as to whether Mars is geologically dead or is still volcanically alive. Since the InSight lander arrived on Mars in November 2018, the lander has detected more than 1,300 Mars quakes. Through its seismometer, the InSight lander can reveal information about the size and location of a tembler. Most of the recorded Mars quakes seem to have taken place in the same spot in a Martian terrain known as the Cerberus Fosse. It is said that this region is riddled with faults, which contradicts our general understanding of earthquakes that involve tectonic plates for faults to appear. Even though Mars doesn't seem to have tectonic plates, other commotions involving the surface are factors that explain faults emerging in the Red Planet. These can include the movement of magma underground, cracking from the contraction of cooling, and even meteorite impacts. All are factors that explain faults emerging in the Red Planet. The seismic records in the Cerberus Fosse were critical information for the InSight mission as they represent half of the recorded Mars quakes. Scientists have analyzed these recorded Mars quakes, including the high-frequency quakes produced by an asteroid hit. Most of these high-frequency quakes were primarily caused by Mars's surface cooling and shrinking over time. On the other hand, the collected low-frequency quakes are concluded to be produced by the movements of magma below the red planet's surface, by comparing InSight's collected seismic waves to the seismic waves produced on our own planet. Anna Middleholtz, a planetary scientist at Harvard University, who led the team in analyzing a thousand Mars quake samples, said that the low-frequency Mars quakes are one that look more like what people will interpret as an earthquake. Our results are much more consistent with data from volcanic regions on Earth, she says. This means that there is really something going on beneath the red planet's skin, and we are more than ready to know about this. The red planet has somehow caused us to question our judgment once again, as it displays yet another surprising fact about its geological status. Mars, which was largely considered to be a geologically dead planet, is somehow breathing and has a large core according to InSight's collected data. This chapter of discovery rewrites our superficial understanding of the red planet. There is more to see from it than what meets the eyes. With these new discoveries, Mars has proved to its neighbors that it is more than just a red planet. It can possibly offer more in the near future. The discovery of Mars as a geologically active planet may not strengthen the important mystery as to whether it is habitable by humans, but it does progress our understanding of the planet. There are things about Mars that we may have misjudged more than what we actually know, but we can only hope that someday, what was once considered a dead planet will reveal itself to be a potential new home to humans. 
Bruce Bannert of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, the mission's principal investigator, said, Finally, we can see Mars as a planet with layers, with different thicknesses and compositions. We are starting to really tease out the details. Now it's not just this enigma, it's actually a living, breathing planet. Unfortunately, things don't last that long, especially on Mars. The hero of this crucial discovery, the InSight lander, may bid its farewell as its power level is draining due to the constant Mars dust storm. Clouds of dust had been accumulating on the solar panels of InSight lander, and while a scoop of the InSight's robotic arm did a great job in reducing the dust on one panel, it didn't make it long since Mars's everyday weather is dust and wind, and the arm had drained more power than actually creates space for the panels to gain energy. Windshield wipers had been a great debate on this lander mission. The reason why NASA hadn't included one on the InSight lander mission is that windshield wipers would have to be powered by extra motors and gears. They would also have to be as long and as wide as the panels. Furthermore, one cannot guarantee that the folding scheme of the wipers could be constantly and successfully mechanized, and if it does fail, it could add another problem for the mission. Finally, as Mars has this constant weather of dust and wind, the windshield wipers wouldn't guarantee the safety of gears and levers from the constant dust storm. The InSight lander may finally have the rest it deserves after four years of non-stop labor in the name of science and discovery, but this doesn't mark the end of the exploration of the Red Planet. There will be more to come and more discoveries to unfold, and we will be more than ready for them. InSight's strange discovery is actually very similar to the strange object being detected on NASA's Ingenuity Mars helicopter. This surprising discovery leads to another interesting and surprising mystery being unraveled on a Mars mission. What discovery could it be? Did Mars once again question our understanding of the Red Planet itself? <laughs>